This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. James, good to see you again. Likewise, that's great to see you as well, Clyde. We're here to talk of Asian marketing, do another video, and today we are in central Taiwan at Zhongxin University, which is downtown Taichung City. A real nice open space in the middle of the city. It's really beautiful. I mean, you can see all these lovely trees just behind us. There's a little bit of nature here. We've got the whole Chinese feeling. I don't know, there must be a lake hiding in here as well. Yeah, there's a lake back here, a nice so. big library, lots of open area here. Real nice campus in the middle of town. But the reason that we're talking today is to follow up on our department store visit. That's right. That was real good when we went last time. I really enjoyed that sort of session. We just sort of took a little bit of a look at outside some of the most famous department stores in Taiwan. And uh, I think recently, Clyde, you paid a, a visit. Your daughter was super excited well, about yeah, one yeah, product. She, she said you've got to go see me. it. So uh, maybe you want to tell us I a little bit about it. I think we ran into that by accident. I originally went in there to shoot video for the show, for the last show on the department stores. And everything was going okay, um, you know, the normal stuff. Mm -hmm. I, had to, I was using the video to shoot for Talk of Asian Marketing, teaching my daughter about shopping at the same time. For example, stores that are empty inside are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just like three <laughs> yeah. items in the... Yeah, right. <laughs> stores that are full inside are cheaper. So we're teaching that, those kinds of fun things. And um, along the way, uh, I got up to the toy floor and we ran into a store and we've got the this flyer This is in here. the Mitsukoshi or one this of these? This is in the Mitsukoshi. Okay. There's one of these. Now some students have told me there's other ones around Taiwan, at least two stores in Taiwan, and it's from America. And we have the brochure here and I'm gonna, I got a PDF of it, put it online so you can download right, it. Yes. So and it's called Build-A-Bear. Build-A-Bear. On the yeah. Build -a -bear. Now, it's really an amazing thing. Now you've watched the video with me and I think that I want to start out by saying it's something that's real easy to get cynical about. So what we're talking about here is teaching people to be consumers, basically. That's it is. I mean, and, and right inside the little flyer here, the, we've got that PDF online, and they're showing you the sort of this, this route, uh, right A from map. Choose Me through to the final step, a little box to yep, take yep, home yep. the, a, the house, bear. a house for your bear. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's nothing, in a way, it's nothing new. I mean, we can go back to Barbie, and Barbie really, you know, over 50 years now, it's something that teaches children about consumption, right? Does, yeah. About how to consume, how to buy things and stuff yeah. like that. But this was a nice little bare one, a little bit more up to date and a little bit of a different approach. Mm -hmm. So you walked into the store and we have the whole video of my daughter showing me about the store. She had not bought there before, but a friend had told her all the details of it. Now, what was your first impression as you saw some of that video of that store there? It was not a fancy store. No, they didn't not. even have any walls. They didn't have a special location. It was just on the toy floor, and they just used their shelving to kind of space out their service scape there. Uh, so I think uh, uh, the first impression is, well, what is this about? Because clearly, the, uh, I remember you saying that first point of contact is the service staff come up and, and give you this. Yeah, they come, they, as soon as you walk in, kind of they come up and give you a map. Yeah, 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 and, it's, yeah, yeah. and then you start to see these machines and there's this device running around with, with like fluff in it. The fluffing machine. And it's kind the of, there's something machine, that's yeah. sort of intriguing about this yeah, whole yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. I think it's easy. I, I, I think they, you know, they avoid having the walls is a really good service scape choice because you can right. see into the store. You can see the racks of little dolls' clothes, yeah, the bear's right. clothes. You can see the stuffing machine and the tubes that come out. So I think you're right on that. So it does get your attention. You walk in, and that's exactly what we did. We walked in, we got the map, and then we started to get the introduction. I think, you know, it was really easy for me to get really cynical. And I think this is the thing with most people, and they, I don't know about you, when I tell people my area of expertise is marketing, their first reaction is, oh, <laughs> you know, marketing. <laughs> huh, you know, I've got to add another that. Another one. Know? Yeah, yeah. Marketing, I'm so, so sick of it. Yeah. And of course, um, I always like to read Dilbert, because Dilbert's real down on marketing, too. Yeah, right? The most useful well, department that, yeah. <laughs> in the company always is marketing. He really rips on those guys. Oh, totally. But, you know, so you went in there, and I, get, I did get cynical. You know, you got the skins of those guys. Yes. And so you sort of work around, don't you? You have the, the skins, the empty bear, yep. and then uh, you fill it, so you get you, it stitched. You choose a voice that you want to put yeah. into him. You can record your own voice. Yeah. Then you choose the stuffing. You also get a little heart. Oh, you got the, oh, you yes. You get a little uh -huh. tiny heart, a little red heart. You put that into his chest or wherever. It goes inside his stuffing. 
And um, you walk all the way around, you buy the accessories, clothes, including underwear, including some sexy underwear, well, maybe. Right. Yeah, you've got the, the whole range of underwear, yep. wasn't it? It yep. really comes out nice. We can see that in the video. Totally, totally. Right from the sexy underwear to the branded and non-branded uh, kind of... A lot of, of co-branded stuff. So. Of course, a little bit more expensive. So, I don't know, James, you know... But how much are we talking? So we end up, I think it, it shows us in here. We've yeah, got like our the, lower end prices are around 400 NT, so... Right, through to 880, but Yes, yeah, so about 12 US dollars up to about 20 US dollars for the bear and his stuffing. And then the accessories run about $4 for four, four kind of a shirt yes. or... Uh, uh, four, uh, about four U.S. dollars to about ten U.S. dollars for the co-branded stuff, NBA co-branding, Harley Davidson, and I think it's easy to get kind of cynical about all that yeah. stuff because you're going to end up with a product that's going to be around the maybe twelve hundred minimum kind of. Twenty dollars, twelve hundred, about what? About a, uh, forty-five to fifty U.S. dollars. Yeah. So it's not super expensive. It's not super cheap either. At the same time, but of course the idea is to build a relationship with that customer, have them keep coming back. And by the time my daughter had shown me all of this, which you can see, as we're going to cut the video into here. After I was done the tour, I was, I was really getting cynical. I thought, this is just, you know, this is so stereotypical marketing, the marketing right? Isn't it? Then, you, you keep pushing the consumer right, right, to get you more. Push, you I change. love your point at the end there. You say, well, of course, when you're one year old, you know, you need to have your cake, and they have the little one-year-old cake there, so you better buy that as well. Got to get know? that. You have that whole sense of buying a little bit more, exactly. bit more, bit more, bit more, 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 more. It's, everything's about more, more, more. And you know, the the thing is, when I was getting towards the end, I was getting really cynical. I'm thinking, you know, this is something, you know, just so typical of marketing. I think the perception of a lot of people of marketing. You take a word like buy, and you change it to born, yeah. right? Yeah, you, you, so you, 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 and then you get a birth certificate, you know, yes, yes. And, and in a way it's so shallow. So I was about to walk out of there very cynical and very critical, but just before I left, a young girl came in, and you saw her. And she was so engaged. I mean, I think even your daughter was quite into it. Yeah, 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 it yeah, was yeah, interesting yeah. that you, you said that she knew all the details. So obviously yeah. some of our friends had been there and were really into it. Yeah, I think my daughter and, had a friend uh, who had gotten one, and yeah. she knew all those details. All those tiny details, yeah. and this you'll see in the, the video that girl coming in she was obviously really engaged with the whole concept she took her little doggy um, over he had four he's got yeah. four feet so he has four skates and she pulled him in like a like a real doggy walking him yeah. and then they walked over to the fluffy area and she said remember you were born here and they had the uh, gifts or uh, the yeah. birth certificate was there and then they took them over to the cleaning area which actually is a vacuum area yeah. but she's pretending it's getting a bath yeah. and she was really into it James she was really passionate about and it and she looked happy and you know it took me right back to that whole time of the sort of Tamaguchi pet in Japan uh, and I think there's that for me it was starting to make a certain amount of sense you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I could see you know the question is how much is it going to cost and that's that horrible marketing bit that yeah, makes you yeah, think yeah. not more of the same yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, just, well, exactly I, mean, I was tuned in at, yeah. at both your points in terms of that cynical another marketing ploy to right. sell more right. rather than a concept and I think that's that was fascinating but it's it a balance was, it's a balance and, and if I had walked out without seeing that girl and her yeah. mother come in I would have really been cynical. Yeah. I and mean, when you saw my daughter's comment, she's like, this is really neat. She knew all those details, but yeah. then her perspective was, this is for rich people. Yes, it's and a pricey product. I, let me make that clear. I'm not rich. Are you rich? Well, the last time I checked, there's about $10 in my pocket, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. He's cheap. But the, but the point is, you know, that was her perception. So yeah. she's probably not a buyer of there. But one interesting point was, something like this in Asia would easily be marketable with older students. And to prove my point, I took the video we saw to class. I showed it in class, and a lot of my students are not really into marketing. They want to learn about it, but they're a bit cynical. And so they see things, and the first thing there is like, oh, my God, not that stuff again. But then in the class, people in the uh, class had received one of these as a gift. Uh, uh, uh. Some young lady had gotten a gift from uh, a boy she knew. And we're talking girls who are 22, 23 years yeah, old. Yeah. And I think that kind of very big difference here than, than back home, yeah, indeed, yeah. where I often say 25-year-olds here are more like 15-year-olds back home, uh, yeah. at least in a marketing sense. Yeah. They get into these little toys. They get into these yeah. gifts. And that might be a perfect market for them, that kind of I sentimental kind of thing. In fact, uh, I think uh, one of your other students had seen exactly that kind of observation. Yeah. Quite a lot of that age group it had really started to click with. And uh, when you look at the sort of products that 
that age group is buying. I think there's that real live segment that's very different from the US very and different. different from the totally UK. Totally different. That sort of cute kind of uh, segment. Right. That we've I talked mean, about if before. they'd taken the store and changed it a little bit, they did have like underwear with hearts. But if they would upgrade it to be more, a little bit more risque, yeah, a little bit more on the older person's side, yeah. you know, All, that's not to say that 25 year olds are more risque, but yeah. it's that because they are 25. It's not just a dollar yeah, anymore, yeah, you know? It is. And also there were things like the, some of my students I talked to had gotten these. They really liked it because the bear comes with a message, pre-programmed, but you can record your own. So their friend bought it, recorded a message, and then gave it to them. Gave yeah. it to yeah. them. Yeah. I, I think, think that, that versatility yeah. is where they need to yeah, really, a key really point tune there. in. Yes, yes. So overall, um, you know, this is kind of a continuation of our department store visit. This is an American company that's come over yeah. to Taiwan, build a bear workshop. Um, there seems to be two of them in Taiwan. Two points here. One, marketing is easy to be cynical about, but hey, it seems like if it's done right, it can really touch some people. Yeah. And I think it's participative in terms mm -hmm. of not just a product you go and pull off the shelf, but it's actually integrating the consumer into the uh, product. Yeah, and what's wrong with a, that? And what's exactly. wrong with that? And that know, somebody great. can have some emotional attachment and feeling about that and enjoy it. What's wrong with that? The little girl's mom, she seemed to enjoy taking her there. It seemed like something to do on a Sunday afternoon. What's wrong with that? So I think this is a good example. I don't think anybody's hurt by this. The prices are fairly reasonable. But number two point is adjustment for local. You know, yes, localization for, sure. for this kind of company would make the biggest difference. And maybe I'll look in and see if I can contact them, but I bet they have no idea of the market they're missing. You know what I'm saying? Yes, they do. think they've got some buyers. That's good enough. Yeah. But they don't realize there's a huge market they're missing in there's Asia. There's another segment out there and some of the localized, co-branded uh, products. Oh, hey, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, they got Harley-Davidson Harley on there. <laughs> and I'm sure some people buy that and think Harley-Davidson, but if they could catch on to the local co-branding and they had some Japanese cartoon characters on there, although they did have a Hello Kitty. Yeah. But, you know, that's kind but of that's standard symbolic, these days. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, then, that'll wrap it up for this little short segment. Uh, please uh, watch the rest of the video, the shopping thing. If you've got and, any uh, comments, comment on Take there. a look at the PDF yeah, the as PDF well. We've got the PDF of this little brochure actually. there, so you can get a feeling, a little bit more of a detailed feeling. I yes. don't know if they've got a... They've even got a... They've got their information on the back. Right on the web, back, we'll show page, that yeah. uh, web page as well. Yeah, great. Okay, so uh, that wraps it up for this one. And take a look at our department store show. And this was a Japanese department store, but it's an American uh, little store inside of there. So enjoy that. See ya. Bye. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior.